So today we're going to be working with arrays and I'd like to provide some contextual application within which arrays may be valid um, to actually use. And I'd like to actually show how they may be used and sort of manipulated um, by, by sort of um, not manipulated, but really just populated um, by using for loops. Now here we have a skeleton of a program. And this is of course just a pseudocode. It's a series of instructions which will follow. You could read through it all together, or of course you could just follow each instruction sequentially, just do what the, what the comment is asking, and then it should tie it all together at the end. So this is a weather tracker, which is essentially going to keep track of um, the temperature over the span of a number of days. So we're gonna ask the user for how many days they'd like to keep track of the temperature and we're going to insert a temperature or the, the user will really ascribe a, a temperature for each day. Um, so first we ask the user for how many days they'd like to do this for. And we use a scanner obviously because we have to take input from the, from the user. And so we can ask them here, we can say, look, how many days for, for how many days would you like to keep track of the temperature? And we're going to do this. We're going to we're going to actually give the user the ability to actually enter in an amount of days, and we're going to call this integer length data dot next in. I'll tell you why we call it length. We call it length because of the significance of the second step. So we create an array which will allow the user to enter the amount for the number of days specified. So this is essentially so we're actually collecting a number of days here, and we're actually referring to a collection. And when we want to store these um, collected amounts of data, we can actually use an array. So we're going to actually have an array of temperatures um, for each day. Um, so we're going to store these temperatures in a double array um, called temp days equals, um, equals new and then double. So the first set of um, braces just signify that we're going to create an array. But the second set of braces actually want us to enter in an integer. So if we were, ent if we were to enter three here, we would essentially create three boxes. Um, we'd essentially create three boxes in, in memory, which would um, have indexes. So these indexes um, are created and they correspond to um, the number of boxes that we have, which is nothing but um, the length of the array. So if I were to do four, we'd have four boxes. Now the length of the array is four. And because it's four, we would have um, sort, of a, sort of another index added on. So these, these indexes, the role of these indexes is because these are just empty boxes, but we wanna actually refer to the index and actually populate the boxes with an element. So that's why these indexes are important. Um, so here we've actually just signified that we're gonna have an array of length three, but we don't wanna hard code the length. Um, essentially we want the user to enter the length which, which they've already done. So the length of the array is nothing but the days. And so here, I'm just gonna put length. So now we've created an array um, of a number of days. There's nothing in the array, it's just an array of a particular length. It's just declared, it hasn't been initialized. So here I'm actually going to do that initialization. So the program should ask enter number of days uh, or enter the temperature for day X. So if on the first day enter the temperature for day one, then day two, then day three and so on and so forth for the number of days they've specified. Um, and so this uh, usually most commonly we do this by a for loop. It's going to um, initialize an integer variable called index also, also referred to as I um, index equals zero and i is going to be less than, or index really, is going to be less than um, temp days dot length. And we're going to increment index by one. And inside the code, we're going to actually do something. So um, essentially the idea behind um, what's inside the for loop Boolean expression here is essentially just, so we have an integer variable called x. And let me just put that diagram back up here again. Um, not diagram, but really representation, this visual representation of indexes and boxes or, or elements, wh whatever you want to call it. So it, th this for loop, it, it executes something again and again. And as it executes something again and again, it's going to increment this variable that we've created, which is called index, by one. And index just keeps track, um, index keeps track of the index um, the indexes. So these are the indexes. It starts from zero and it goes onwards for the length of the array. Um, and 
So first, for the first iteration, it's going to do something to the first element because the index is the means by which we can actually access the element at a particular um, index. And then when it when it increments again, um, in that index will actually become one. And then so we're going to access the element in the in the index. In the, we're going to access the element which corresponds with the index one. And then for the second iteration, it's going to increment i by one again. And then we'll access um, sort of the uh, the element at that um, at that particular index, which in this case is two. So what would we like to do? Well, we would like to enter. We would like to ask the user for um, to enter a temperature for day X. So we can actually do this by, of course, asking them enter the temperature for day. And I guess what we would do is we would just do index, and then we'll give them the ability to actually enter in that temperature. So at this moment in time. All we've done is we've asked them um, for the temperature and given them the ability to, uh, to enter the temperature for um, a particular amount of times. Now, how many times? Well, I've explained that this is keeping track of the index and this is incrementing. And as we increment, we accrue more iterations, but how many iterations do we want? Well, the iterations are gonna continue until index is less than temps.length. So the length of the array, like I said before, is just the number of boxes we've created. The number of boxes in this case is three, but the number of indexes inclusive of zero is two. So I only want to iterate. So the, in, so the index increment, uh, increment process should only happen um, until the index is less than the length of the array. Um, and so essentially what I mean by that is um, it's going to keep adding one to the, in, um, to the index and essentially it's going to keep doing that until index is less than the length of the array because recall that the number of boxes that we have is always one more than the number of indexes. Because if, if I keep adding on, it will essentially go beyond um, how many boxes I actually have. So we enter the temperature for day zero, day one, day two, and that, I mean, so this also increments. This is just representing um, the days as we go on. But um, what we wanna do is we wanna populate the array with whatever they entered for that particular um, temperature. And the way that we do that is we reference the name of the array and we specify an index and that index will equal the temperature they entered. So we have temp day, oh, so this is called temp days. We actually wanna do this uh, temp, temp uh, I guess I could do temperature array. I could just do, I could just call it temperature array. So temperature array, so this, so just think about the first iteration, what the first iteration would look like. For the first iteration, we're on zero and index does is not e less than temp dot length. So it's gonna keep incrementing I index by one. And then for the first one, it's going to ask them to enter a temperature and then it will take in that temperature and it's going to assign zero because recall that for the first iteration index is zero and it's gonna assign temperature to that index or to the element at that index. And then it will do the same thing again, but this time it's gonna be working with um, the, the, the element at the first index. And then it'll do the same thing again as long as index does not is less than temp dot length, um, and in which case um, we're actually confined within the array because as soon as it reaches, as soon as index is equal to temp array dot length, then we'll just stop executing what's inside the block of code. So at this present moment in time, we're allowed to enter the temperature for um, a day for the number of lengths specified. And we'll just show the, showcase this here. So it says, for how many days would you like to keep track? Um, so if I say three, it should ask me for um, the temperature for three days. So it says, enter the temperature for day zero. Let's say I said 34, enter the temperature for day one, 32, and then 31. 
Um, and so it's not really doing anything because I haven't specified for it to do something. But what I really want to stress is it's, it's allowing me to ask for the temperature consistently um, for how many days I've specified. So it's starting the count at zero, which is kind of funky, but I wanted to be able to say, enter the temperature for day one, then enter the temperature for day two, and then day three, and so on. I don't want it to start at zero. So a good way around this is to actually just do index plus one here. Because for the first iteration, index is zero, but if I do index plus one, it will always be one more than, um, than what I want, which will actually represent what I really want, right? So for the first iteration, it's zero. It's actually gonna ask me for zero plus one. So it's gonna say, enter the temperature for day one. And then for the second iteration, um, will be on the first iteration, the iteration index will be equal to equal to one, and then it's gonna be one plus one, and then I'll say two, so enter the temperature for day two, so on and so forth, and so that, that would actually represent what I want it to do. So if I do two days here, it'll essentially ask me for day one, and it'll ask me for day two. That's what I wanted. Now it says using this collection, this array that is, find the sum of the temperatures. So in order to actually find the sum of the temperatures, I'm gonna have a temperature or a variable called, um, it's gonna be a double, it's gonna be called sum equals, um, it's gonna equal zero for, the, uh, for, the, for now. And as we iterate through, so we know that the sum is essentially going to be equal to whatever temperature they entered for the first iteration. For the first iteration, um, the sum is just whatever has been entered because there's nothing else to add it to. But for the second iteration, that is to say when index is one, first index is zero, that's the first iteration. When index is incremented, um, because index is still less than temporary.length, um, we're gonna enter another temperature. Um, and so essentially, so the sum is equal to the temperature for the first iteration, for the next iteration, we want it to add on to the temperature that we had before. So since sum is actually storing the first temperature for the second iteration, we want it to do sum plus whatever temperature they entered. So in order to sort of embody this idea, um, we do sum is equal to sum plus temperature. And then actually I can, I can, I can print out the, um, I can print out the sum. So let me just go ahead and print this out here. So after these iterations sort of conclude, it'll let me to it'll allow me to print out the sum. So if I say three and then I enter in, let's say three doubles, they could also be integers. Let's say four, three, and one. So four plus three is seven plus one is eight. And so the sum is eight, which I think works out fine. Now here it's asking to find the average. So we know that the average average is equal to the, um, the sum of the entries divided by the number of the entries. So the entries in this case is essentially just the temperatures, right? So the sum of the entries. So the average, so let's just actually declare an average here. An average will essentially be equal to the sum of the entries, which we already have um, kept track of, which is called sum, divided by the number of entries. And the number of entries is essentially nothing but um, the temperatures, right? So the, the temperatures that we've entered, that's the number of entries. And the temperatures, we only would ever enter a um, temperature for a specific day. So for the number of temperatures that we've entered are actually just it would be exactly the same as the number of days. So we'd only enter in three temperatures for three days. So, and we know that days are sort of essentially just the length of the array, right? And so we can just do array.length here, or uh, in this case, temporary.length. And then we can print out the average. Say three days, and then I enter three. 
So 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 2 is 9. The sum is 9, the average is 3. That works out. Um, and then it says, use this collection to find the highest temperature in the collection. Okay, so I actually, in order to do this here, I actually want to um, switch over to a program um, that I actually, I, I use a lot to visualize code. And that is essentially Python Tutor. Now, Python Tutor is essentially this idea that we can actually visualize what the computer does in the background while we, uh, while we have code. So what we want to do is we want to find essentially the highest value. And let me go ahead and zoom here, zoom in here. We want to find the highest value in an array. So the highest value in an array, um, how do we do this? So let's say we have a double array, right? Which is essentially just called temp array, which is what we have. This is the shorthand way to initialize arrays. So let's say we had four, five, and uh, two, or let's say four, five, yeah, four, five, and two works. So how do we find the highest value? So we're obviously going to be using a for loop, um, int index, or let's just name it i equals zero. I should be less than temporary.length. I plus plus. So this is how we traverse through the array. If we want to deal or compare all the elements or do something with all the elements, we use a for loop. And so now, um, essentially what we want to do is we're going to say, look, we're going to assume that this is our strategy. We're going to assume that the first element um, in the array, which is just the name of the element, the name of the array, um, and then that would be I, right? Because it starts, from, the incrementation starts from zero. So the first element in the array, which is actually just, just temporary and I, right? For the first iteration, that is. Um, we're gonna assume that it is the is the highest, is the highest value. Okay. And if the um, essentially if um, if the value next to it is um, greater than the highest value, then that will be the new highest value. Okay, so just using this thought process here. Um, so if so, if the so actually what we're going to do is we're going to say so the first one says assume that the first element in the array is the highest value. So we're going to say okay. Let's just say okay. So this is temporary, and the first element is zero, and we're going to assign that to highest value. So the highest value, this double called highest value is essentially going to be equal to the, um, it will essentially be equal to, um, the first element in the array. So this is, ha this has the highest value. And then, so I have, so I assume that this is the highest value. And what I do now is I want to look at the next element and see if that is greater than my highest value. If it is, then I'll change it to the highest value. If it's not, I'll just keep the highest value the same. So what I'll do for that case is I'll say, um, and I actually wanna start my, I wanna start my um, search of the array at index one. And I'll tell you why. So let's just go here and let's just say um, zero, let me put the index numbers here so it becomes a little more clear. So it's zero, one, two, right? So these are our indexes inclusive of zero. So I already know that this is my highest value, or at least I'm assuming that my highest value is four at the zeroth index. And I wanna start looking at the second element or the first index to compare it to my previous one. So it doesn't make any sense to start at zero because what does it mean to compare a number with itself? So I wanna start from one. And then as we move from one and then I increments, we'll move to two and we'll only do this for the length of the array which is three. So I should always be less than um, three. So the number of index incrementation should always be less than three because there is always one less than the length of the array in terms of indexes that is. So we say, okay, look, if our highest value is essentially um, greater than, or let's just say less than, um, temporary at a particular index. For the first iteration, it'll be one and then two and then three. So it's gonna keep going on through the index uh, or through the elements in the array. Um, if the highest value is less than, 
the element at that particular index, then the highest value will now be the element at that particular index because our highest value is less than the temporary at that index, right? So otherwise, otherwise we'll sort of keep the, um, the highest value unchanged, which happens regardless. So we actually don't have to specify it, right? So now let's actually use the, you know, the beauty of essentially, let's use the beauty of, um, let's use the beauty of uh, this, this program here, this application to actually walk through this line by line and see what happens, right? So it says reach the end of the file while parsing. Essentially we have to add one more brace. Probably didn't do that before. Cannot find symbol variable index. So we're referencing index here, but okay. So let's just change this to index or actually let's just go ahead and change these to I because we're referencing index, but we have I there. So it's saying main six because we're starting at the sixth line in the main method. So as we move next, it will essentially create an array. This is the reference. And then it populates it with these values here. Um, and essentially, so the highest value will be at temporary brack of zero um, brack. And so it's gonna, it's gonna essentially say, okay, we have a double called highest value and that's gonna be the first element in the array. And then of course that's what happens. So now it's going to say, okay, int i is something, it's equal to one. So we start at the first and i should be less than temporary dot length. Um, and as long as it is keep incrementing i by one. Um, and, so, and so now it says, okay, look, we're at, the in, we're at this particular index one. So if the highest value is less than temporary brac i brac, um, or in that case five, um, then the highest value will be equal to whatever that element was. In this case, it's five. So then it updates the value for the highest value and then does this again. And again, if, if, if it's not, right? If, so if the highest value is less than, if it's not less than the temporary, in other words, if temporary um, at that particular index is, is not greater than the highest value, then the highest value will just remain unchanged. And so we can do this for any amount of elements um, and this would work. So I think this is a, a pretty good uh, way of finding the, um, of finding the, the highest value in an array, right? So let's just take this over here um, into our into our program. So let's go ahead and go back to sharing what we had before. So it says using us to find the highest value. So we know that we're gonna have a variable called highest value. Then we're gonna use a for loop. And then we say, well, if the highest value is essentially less than temporary, um, any particular index in the temporary or any particular element at a particular index, um, then the highest value will essentially change to being that, um, that element at that particular index. Otherwise, highest value will essentially remain unchanged. And so then of course, after the for loop ends, print out the highest value. So it is giving me an error and let's see why. It's because I'm not using the concatenation sign. For how many days would you like to keep track? So if I say two, 
it should ask me for day one and day two. Um, so if I say 45 and 23, or the highest value is 45, yeah, you know, let's try this once more. Four days, if I enter these numbers here. So the hot, so the sum is 14, right? So I guess what it's done is to take two and three, which is five, and then four, nine, nine and five is th uh, 14. And then the average is 3.5 and the highest value is five, which is which is absolutely true. And then of course we're told to find the lowest value. And I, I don't think this is um, any harder, right? So we found, we found the highest value and now it's gonna tell us to find the lowest value. So the lowest value would essentially just be this entire thing, um, but it would be lowest, right? So lowest value. And instead of printing out highest value, we'll just print out lowest value. And we're also gonna change the Boolean expression in this case. Um, so, if the lowest value is lower than temporary, then we're not going to change the lowest value. So if the low, so if the if if any particular index in the array is less than the lowest value, then the lowest value will be whatever that temporary was, or whatever that index, whatever that element at that index was. Um, and so the lowest value is essentially just um, just what we have here. So let's let's see if this works. Probably taking more time than than it's comfortable, right? So we have three, we have three, um, we have three um, days here, and we're going to enter twenty four or let's say twenty five, five and five, right? And so the average is this: um, twenty five plus five is thirty, and then thirty five is thirty plus five is thirty five. And we have an average. Our highest value is twenty five, which is absolutely true, and our lowest value is zero point zero. Whoa, that's probably not a good thing, right? Um, let's hear, it. let's see. So it's not updating the value of, so the lowest value is zero. It goes through the array. If, if the lowest value is essentially, let's see here. So essentially with the lowest array um, or the lowest temperature rather, uh, there were a couple of things I forgot to do, like actually reference the first index or the first element at the first index. Um, uh, and of course, also, um, I was doing this instead of this. So only if the lowest value is greater than a particular index, or in other words, if a particular index is greater than or less than the lowest value, then and only then would I want to sort of um, have uh, that index or that element at that index represent. Uh, or be set to lowest value, or rather have lowest value set to that uh, that that element at that index. Um, and so now, of course, I think this I think I think this should work um, perfectly fine. Let's see here. So I, I have three. Uh, let me enter three days: 45, 65, and twenty-three. So then it gives me the sum. It gives me the average. It gives me the highest. It gives me the lowest values. I think that's representing what I wanted to represent. Um, so, so that's really just how we uh, use arrays um, in, in some applications here. I'd also like to uh, work on a little brain teaser. And I've, I've, I have this brain teaser already sort of here. And I'm gonna move over to PyCharm, or not PyCharm, but um, Python Tutor. And what this is going to do is I'm going to edit this code and I will erase what I had before. And so I'm gonna create, uh, essentially I'm going to create, let's see, so this is what I want. So I want to have an array called A equals, um, so it's gonna be an array of integers. It's gonna be called A. It's gonna be initialized to one, two, three. And I'm going to have an inter integer array called B, and that is essentially going to be initialized again 
to a couple numbers, so that's four, five, and six. And this is basically saying that we set a equal to b, um, and then um, after we set a equal to b, we say that a of the element at the zeroth index in a is equal to one, is what we say. And then we print out the zeroth index for b. So what sort of the question here is um, what would be uh, the output if we were to print that out. So I'm going to run through the um, the line by line here. Um, it says this is unexpected. Oh. So we start in the main method on line eight. Where we, decry where we declare and initialize an integer called a. Um, and then of course, a is but a reference to a set of values um, which, have, which are just elements which have corresponding indexes. And then we do the same thing for b. So a itself is not the, init, uh, the array or b itself is not the array. These are just sort of references to a collection of, um, um, in this case, integers which have indexes corresponding with them. And so when we set A equal to B on line 11, when we click this next here, it's going to essentially, what A is referring to will no longer refer to that set of, ins, uh, to those in variables. It will now refer to what B is referring to. And so we can actually see um, A is um, equal to, so what A, hmm, interesting, Let's see. So yeah, so essentially B, you can see B is referring to four, five, six. And now next, now they're both referring to four, five, six. And so when, when we change the zeroth um, index of A, um, which is four, when we change that to one, it will change them, it will change it for what both A and B are referring to, because they're both referring to the same um, thing. So it's changed it to one, and then it prints that out. So the output in that case would be one. So that was a little brain teaser. I hope that demonstrated the difference between references and arrays. Um, these references just refer to a collection of um, integers in this case, or really whatever you declare it to be. Um, and so that, that's, that's arrays in context.